Hey, hey, hey. This particular chapter or section, I should say, 4.2 is about specific types of experiments, the match pair design. And a match pair design is a special type of blocking. So turn to page 17 in, of your notes and let's get started. Now, what is a match pair design? So a match pair design is a special type of block in which the subjects get both treatments. So let's talk about a type of block design first. Now let's ask a question about um, exercise physiology. So, and some of you guys don't know what that is. Males probably do, females not so much. Exercise physiology is literally the study of, of exercise, how different exercises work for the body. Yeah, I'm thinking about this because that's what my son is majoring in. Okay, so we're going to put it into a block. The block is I'm going to look at our males versus our females. Why? Because, like I said, guys know what that is, at least some guys. And females, not so much. Honestly, never heard of it until my son told me he was ma majoring in it. Okay. Now, within each block, though, I am going to give what's called a pretest and a post-test. A pretest would be, okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm going to um, give you a test to see what you know about this course. Okay? So you have it. Answer it. Epic fail. You hardly know anything about it. And then at the end of it, he goes, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you another test. Well, it could literally be the exact same test. Let's see what you now know about the subject. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a match pair design. Because you receive both treatments. So yes, we block them into males and females. Okay, and as we look at the males, the males took the before and after test. Okay, and remember the males started out knowing more information than the females in the first place. So that's why I even did the block. Okay, and why did I do um, um, a after test or even look at the comparison of the before and after test? Well, as a teacher, I'm going to do that to see if a, if a person has improved. Now, as I go to the second block, women, we're going to see that there's a mass improvement. Why? Because they knew nothing about um, exercise physiology even, you know, prior to the course. So, remember, a match pair design is a special type of block where subjects, in this case the males and the females, they receive both tests. Um, a before and a, um, a um, pre-test and a post-test. Now I mentioned before and after because before and after as I um, here mentioned, okay, another type of test would be that's, that is a match pair as a before and after test. And let's say I am looking at An exercise regimen, and as I'm looking at the exercise, say we all know that I've got weak knees. So let's say I go through some type of physical therapy. So they're going to um, take pictures of my um, cartilage or my range of motion and things like that because they can measure those type of things. So let's say they're measuring range of motion. And then, okay, so that is my before test. And then after I've had my physical therapy, you know, months later, the after test is, okay, what is my new range of motion? Can I, before I could only bend it, you know, 45, um, let's say 45 degrees. Well, can I bend it so that it is, you know, 35, um, a 30, 35 degree angle between my leg and um, the back of um, my, uh, my shins. Um, so, that is literally what idea of a match pair and specifically a before and after test. So I talked about the pre-test and post-test, and now I've just spoken about the before and after. And remind me tomorrow to tell you about one more that I literally lived with my daughter when she was in 
third grade that dealt with before testing and after testing at one of our big name um, academic improvement centers. Now, I'm going to continue though. So as I continue here, when is it beneficial to block? Well, it's beneficial to block the variation among the subjects and to control, to even give us more control of the lurking variable. Please remember, um, when you um, match pairs, they have to be similar experimental units. So the example that I just gave was male versus female um, in terms of the exercise physiology class. In, um, and if with the physical therapy, it would be the same thing, male versus female. And I would say even with that, a block that I would go into is age groups because, yeah, my knees don't do what they used to. So that's a prime example of, okay, it counts for a variation between subjects and it takes even more control of lurking variables. Now, as I go to this next part, what is the difference between a block and a match pair? With a block, you put them into two groups and each group gets one treatment. Each group gets one treatment. For the match pair, you put them into groups and then they get both treatments. So, let's say I want to compare a Ford to a, 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 che, um, a Ford to a Chevy, both American-made cars. Oh, Ford, not so much. They all moved to Mexico, right? But let's just continue to dream and say they both are American-made cars. Well, group A, and I'm going to block them into males and females again because we drive differently. So for the, with the males, I'm going to have them drive the Ford and then have, and then, you know, see how, how fast the stopping is, how, long, how fast it takes to get from zero to 60 and other things that I can't think of right now. Okay. And they're going to do that with the Ford. Okay. Car. Now they're going to take a Chevy that is a similar car to that and do the exact same thing. Well, that's a match pair because those males got to drive both cars. And then, of course, with the other block, the females, the exact same thing is going to happen. Now, the way it happens the majority of the time when it comes to that type of match pair design, while the women are driving the Ford, the men will be driving the Chevy, and then they literally switch off. Now, here, a couple of fill-ins that I wanted to mention, though. A match pair is a type of random blocking in which we have two treatments and conditions and participants are grouped are um, grouped into grouped into groups that's redundant based on random assignment to each treatment so this is the thing and I can guarantee somebody's going to ask me Ms. Yarba what is the difference between a block and a match pair a match pair treatment is imposed upon both um, the one, each, each subject gets both treatments. Each subject gets both treatments. And please remember, sometimes with the order of those treatments matter. Like the Ford versus Chevy trucks, no one cares. Okay. But when I was talking about a before and after test, well, or um, a, a pre-test and a post-test, well, stay the obvious. That has to be, the order is definitely relevant. Okay. So now I want to go to our question. Question 80. Please go ahead and read that. Okay, so here we've got a statistics department for com um, comparing teaching methods. The response variable is the final exam score and students' attitude towards statistics. Um, one study compares two levels, meaning we have standard old school overhead projector and Shaw that still exists, I guess. Huh? And the other one is a media. Okay, we have eight lecture sections, and then we have 200 students, and we have four instructors. So, each of whom teach two sections. That's important. So, um, suppose the section lectures are as follows. You can see right there, which takes me to. Suppose we randomly assign two lectures at standard in this section and two, okay, for medium. How is this going to be confounded? Because
Because the bottom line here is if the response is different, if they find that the response is different, is it because of the instructor or is it because of the teaching methods? Well, you don't know because that confounding variable is going to be literally the potential instructor themselves. Okay, now go ahead and read the next question. Okay, so a better design. What a better design is going to be, if there are four instructors in eight sections, why not give each of those instructors one section of each? Meaning give one instructor the um, technology and then also give one, give one instructor technology and then old school um, overhead projector. So here, going to randomly assign one class to be taught with multimedia and one class to be taught using the standard method. Each instructor gets one of each class. Therefore, the researchers can find the results based on the type of lecture and, of course, the final exam score, and I forgot to write down here, and the attitude towards statistics, not, um, not because of the teacher. So it's taking out the confounded variable of the teacher. Okay, so here's the end of my match pair. And um, don't forget, if I gave you other homework, don't forget to do it. So, TTFM, ta-ta for now.